everyone. Uh, welcome to our sixth session of Mid the Global Leader Program. And we are absolutely delighted to be welcoming our guest, Amalia uh, from Spain. And uh, our, it, Amalia, first of all, thank you so much for uh, joining our session and be our guest. And I wonder if you, to start with you, could perhaps briefly tell us about yourself and why did you started your journey in the field of uh, entrepreneurship and leadership? Okay, well, first of all, uh, hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I've been to Bangladesh, so I feel a bit like home. <laughs> um, I remember saying to me, Kamunacho, and some like words in Bengali. Oh. And uh, yeah, I really, I, I had to learn. I really like it. Also like Rafiki, which I think is friend. Sorry? Rafiki. Rufi? Rafiki. Well, what they, is the English word? I to, I, they told me it's friend in Bengali. Nice. Uh, we call it uh, <laughs> like Bondhu or... Yeah. Oh, no, it's Bundu. Rafiki yeah. is in Swahili. Okay, I'm confused. Okay. Um, long time, I think. <laughs> long time ago. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, thank you, Mahbub, uh, for taking Welcome. me here. And uh, my journey started back in 2014. I just graduated from uh, business and management studies here in my home city, which is Valencia. It's in the Mediterranean coast. It's a very beautiful place. Um, and the university is next to the beach. So <laughs> yeah, so you can, you can, you can, you know, like always, you are, you were always like, uh, you know, like focused toward, yeah. towards your study. Yeah. <laughs> Sound of the waves and, and the sea. It's, I mean, we like after exams, we would usually take a bike and go to the beach and breathe a bit. So I studied there business and management, and then I specialized in marketing, which I really liked because I really like human behavior and psychology. Um, and then I I got an international grant, like a scholarship, to study marketing and to finish my studies in Australia. Okay, great. So I spent six months uh, in the University of Adelaide, um, having a lot of fun. It was also yeah. a city next to the sea. <laughs> well, you could tell. Uh, I think, but it it yeah, it was different from uh, Spain or. Was a similar very different very different life <laughs> and like so far away um i really liked my experience in australia because i met so many people from so different countries you know it was the first time that i had this international experience um and then suddenly i was having coffee with someone from india from one from china from argentina and it was like a global village. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A global village and then realizing that we're actually, you know, pretty similar. Um, even if we come from different countries, but we are from the same place, you know, so that was really nice. Um, and then I learned English. That's where I really excel my English. Um, and then I went back to Spain. And I, I decided to, to start a project and to, to start this entrepreneurial journey. Um, I was- It, it uh, was, it was uh, when you were in Australia? No, I came back to okay. Valencia. I came back to my university. I had to finish some subjects. Mm -hmm. And then I had to do um, an internship. Okay. So it was like mandatory internship to finish my studies. And guess where I chose to do my internship? In the center maybe, perhaps? 
<laughs> in a it was a social incubator. Ah, okay. So it was almost correct, right? Yeah, almost. Okay. It's it's an for the ones that don't know, it's an organization that helps uh, people that want to start projects, that mm -hmm. want to start companies, but companies that are looking to find a solution, um, like to have an impact, to have a positive impact in the world. So mm. you had entrepreneurs that were, for example, um, building a business to take care of old people, for example. I understand. Or, uh, for example, other businesses that were working with environment. So how to reuse like products, how to recycle them. So that's a bit like basically what a uh, social entrepreneurship and the social incubator that I was in. Um, and I was, um, I was doing, I was working in the marketing department there. Nice. And, and then I finished, it was like six months. And, and then I was like, okay, what to do with my life? You know, this question. <laughs> yeah. And, but it was the right time, I think. Yes. I guess when you finish your studies, it's like, mm. now what? Right? Okay, maybe take another PhD or another <laughs> master to, you know, take some time off. And, yes. you know, like, uh, manage some time to think about life. Yeah. I was a bit tired of studying. Uh, I wanted, like, hands on and practice and doing. Um, and I was very like uh, fighting for like social injust injustice. Yeah. yeah. And so I tried to start up a project that was about youth, like how to help young people that have all these burning and these passions to change the world, how to give them the resources and how to give them the community they need to start the project. So specifically, uh, please, can you uh, tell us a bit more about this project? I mean, the way you help young people, because you know, uh, our organization is called Entrepreneurship Development uh, here. We try to, you know, like most of our audiences, uh, they're in universities, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, mostly uh, university students. And, and some of our audiences are, from you know like who are uh, going to be an entrepreneur or who are still uh, in the first phase of their business or startup so mm -hmm. if you, and we one of our uh, you know like objective is to mm -hmm. uh, you know like empower them with uh, knowledge tools you know like experiences yeah. from expert people and just to how to go forward and maybe this will be helpful for them so mm -hmm. we would like to know a bit more about this project yeah. if you can share yeah Sure, I think we're very aligned. Yeah. That that was, I mean, that has been my burning. Um, but I was, I don't know, I was 20. I was so young. <laughs> I was so young. Now I'm 28. So I have eight years of experience. Uh, but then back then, um, the project was um, most of it helping young people to find a community. And here I want to be like, to put a lot of emphasis because I think that the community is key. Why? Because you can do everything you want, but you cannot do it alone, right? So I wanted to change the world so much. I had so many ideas, but I was alone. So that's why I was like, okay, so I'm gonna build a project that what uh, the aim, the objective is to find this community of entrepreneurs, change makers like me that have different skills. Because I don't know how to design a website. I don't know so many things, so I need help. Like a build, so I, building a compact team. Yeah, exactly how important it is to be around people that are different to you, right? 
So something like for for your um, for the School of Entrepreneurship Development, something that I would suggest is that there is um, an exchange of not only business people. Business people need also engineers. Yes. You know, and people from I don't know law or like social studies, psychology, Econ e economics, economics. You know. Yes. I think we we need we all need each other somehow. Yeah. Um but yeah, but at that time I was 20, I was selected to in different uh entrepreneurship programs for young people in in Spain. And they gave me the theory. Okay? The theory was nice. You know, the theory yeah. of starting up and the tools Those, yeah. those are nice on books, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I built a business plan, but, you know, I didn't practice. I didn't go outside the street and talk to young people. I stayed at home building my business plan. And that yeah, so, was a mistake. <laughs> so before, uh, so in that point, uh, It was like for you, yeah, you, you should, uh, you should, uh, should have, uh, you know, like uh, done some survey. You should, uh, you should, when you were, you try to, you know, like execute a plan. You need to study the, your market, the scenarios, the problem, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, um, there's a lot of research, um, there's a lot of talking. We need to talk with people you have an idea you want to start a project start talking with your potential clients start talking with your friends with your family about your idea and be open to receive feedback um, and to change and adapt exactly. yeah um but i mean that i think that every experience gives you something good You know, even for me, it's like I fail, but in reality, I learned so many things from that experience. Um, every every failure for me is a learning. Um, and because I tried to to start a project, then I was selected to work in the European Commission in Brussels. Oh they were looking for a woman that had experience with entrepreneurship. And guess what? You? There were not many. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I went there. Um, there's a really amazing opportunity that it's called Blue Book Trainership. What is Blue, the name? Blue Book Trainership. Blue book trainership if you want to have an experience like an internship experience in the european commission that's the that's the opportunity oh. um and so i got selected in a in a department that was working with entrepreneurship like promoting entrepreneurship and innovation across europe And so I fly to Belgium, to Brussels, and I stay there for eight months. And I work with a beautiful team, a crazy beautiful team that I had a lot of crazy ideas about how to activate this entrepreneurial spirit in people. Because the world needs to change. change. I mean, it, like it's the world is changing already and we humans need to evolve <laughs> and start. And we, we need an update, you know, like iPhone 12, iPhone 13, something like that. We need to update ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So yeah, I spent eight months there. Um, I mean, working a lot with entrepreneurs, Um, yeah. listening to what they were needing, um, what, you know, how governments and policies could help entrepreneurs. 
Uh, uh, in, uh, uh, that was uh, the training, right? How... That was an internship. Okay, so uh, what did you uh, learn from there? From there, I learned, I learned so many things. Um, uh, yeah, like uh, that could be, you know, like beneficial to our, uh, our audience. Those points, that would be great. Wow. A few or... Okay, so I learned that there are opportunities. Like if you are starting up a project and you need funds mm -hmm. and you need support, there is, it is available, but you need to look for it. Exactly. <laughs> that is the most powerful thing, I should say. You know, I, all the resources are available. It can be in the Google, it can be on the online, offline. You need to find it. You know, nobody is going to drive for you. You have the, exactly. have the role. So <laughs> if you don't yeah. have any career, you need to. You, you should know how to, you know, like manage a car, resource manager. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I mean, working there, I realized that there's a lot of funds and people don't know about it. And it's available. So, yeah, to encourage this, you know, search and be connected to different networks um for national funds or international funds there's so many things for entrepreneurship in europe but in everywhere but uh in that point can uh, did you find any uh, available sources where uh there those information regarding funds were published or uh where the scatter did you did you feel the need for you know uh and one website where they are there are the separate you know like two separate tabs where people can you know find different kinds of uh, funds and available there yes there is we were oh, working okay. on that <laughs> we were oh. working on that uh, i'm gonna because the the initiative that i was working with it's called startup europe oh i think i heard that. Uh, do you have any website Yes, I'm, I'm looking. Um, yeah, it's startupeuropeclub.eu. Um, startupeuropeclub.eu. Nice. And there you have all the like calls and funds available. No, um, this is a wonderful issue. Yes. I and appreciate it. I mean, that's um what i was actually that was what i was doing there um and when i arrived there i was like how can i communicate these opportunities more to us people you know? the marketing yeah. exactly so i was in the marketing department and so yeah so that was my team um very yeah it was really really amazing opportunity and uh, uh what do you think about that like you willpower is important you know you need to have the you know like feel or need to have the push from within yourself that uh, okay i want that you know like it's it's available but there's free cars say for example there are 10 cars in the street no one is driving it's free for all but if you don't want to drive it then there is no you know like there's no necessity to have those cars on the street mm -hmm. so willpower is important here yeah willpower yeah like i i need to uh, i want to do it you know there's a push from within yes i mean that's if you don't have that bye you know <laughs> oh you're yeah. not saying me goodbye right oh yeah. it, just, it, just, it was just, it's just a metaphor okay cool. no yeah. i think it, i think it's very important what you're saying you need this uh drive this will Yes. to to do but uh, i think that patience is also important here right. yeah patience a lot <laughs> i mean i'm now working i'm now starting um to do workshops for for young people and for adults and i'm now doing what i want but it took me eight years 
it takes like sure it takes time but but that's how life works i think yes that's true hmm. that is true and um, you know like you have been to few developed countries and still you know like uh, developed countries they are you know like modern they have modern technology you know they're well equipped very resourceful with people and you know like amenities uh, still did you find any uh, gap uh, after having all those you know the nice well set up yeah mm -hmm. in, as for in, for infrastructure but were there any gaps okay um are you talking like in developing countries that i've been uh no the developed countries Ah, okay so for example spain or yeah so i mean we have infrastructure and we have a lot of um organizations that are working for entrepreneurship a lot of incubators a lot of accelerators and I mean, the in the European level, like in the Commission, I knew a lot of initiatives that are helping entrepreneurs, but I don't think we have so much, for example, in Spain, you know, the government, for example, there's no so much help for entrepreneurs. It's very difficult, like it's, you know, we need to pay lots of things to be an entrepreneur. Um, so, so someone okay. should, you know, come up with uh, <clears throat> ideas or, uh, you know, like policy development regarding, you know, like people need to, you know, organize more events, you know, talk about more uh, regarding entrepreneurship, you know, like, uh, like the thing you said, community, you know, yeah. people should build a more like-minded community and they should uh, walk the talk and, you know, like talk about uh, uh, entrepreneurship, the impact, yeah. the future of entrepreneurship, you know? Yeah. Um, right now, I'm not so into those uh, events and activities. Mm -hmm. so, like the last year and a half, I disconnected a bit from those events. But before I was working in Madrid, for example, and I was working in a public private project that um, we were organizing events every day to connect entrepreneurs and to talk about technology and inno innovation. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot, but you, my, I don't know, my suggestion is that you find those places where you feel aligned, you feel that it's for you because not all the events are probably I, for you. Yeah, maybe be of in, no interest to me or to them, to some people. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And uh, please, could you tell us a bit about your volunteer experiences like uh, you had so far and what, what were the skills you developed by being doing so? Mm, well, I, I wanted to, um, to share about my experience in Brazil. Sure. Um, that I study social innovation and okay. entrepreneurship. And there I got very useful skills. Like that for me was uh, a very important moment in my life because I, I study in an institute that it's called the Amani Institute. And I just loved so much the, the teachers and the people working in this place. Um, and we talked a lot about, um, you know, start a company, but asking you also the question, why? Why you're doing what you're doing? You know, um, like finding a bit the purpose um, because you're gonna spend a lot of time doing that thing. So maybe you want to look the reasons behind and this is where um, there's a lot of personal work. Um, 
that I talk with you, you know, that if you want to change the world, you know, maybe you want to see also inside of you what are the things that you need to change or to transform. Um, so there I learned a lot of tools and resources um, to help me in this journey to manage myself. Because at the end, if you're an entrepreneur, you're working with yourself. And that's not easy. Like the management of you, like what are your leadership skills? Um, how is your way of, of being, of acting, of talking to people, communicating? So for me, that's key. And I don't know, there's so many ways to call it like self-development, self-knowledge. Oh, cool leadership there's so many ways but at the end is to know more about you so you can be better of service to the world wonderful so did you have to do uh, the meditation or <laughs> that was part that was part i started meditating um in in amani we we always started the course with the short meditation and that was super powerful. Oh, that's great. Hmm. And, uh, and then you, yeah, then uh, you started following your uh, journey yeah. in leadership and entrepreneurship. The, I mean, in my experience in Brazil, I, I mean, that was like a laboratory where I would experiment um, the things that I want to change in the world and, uh, you know, what do I want to do in the world? So I will um, try to do it with a metho methodology that this institute has developed, which is based in the de design thinking. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's, yeah, it's design can thinking. Catch, can you share uh, a bit in short about design thinking? yeah <laughs> okay so design thinking is you have an idea um you have an idea and um of of trying to solve a problem and sometimes the first thing that we do we see a problem and the first thing we do is we find a solution design thinking is not like this design thinking is like okay you have a problem let's understand the problem exactly. let's see all the things that are connected to the problem that you're not seeing and when you understand the problem when you have done research when you have talked to people then build something very small that is very cheap you build something and then you try like a pilot business yeah like yeah, exactly. Experiment. So you experiment and you try. You try and you collect feedback. And then you realize, wow, okay, I got it wrong. I need to change this. Change. And so you change it. And then again, you experiment and you collect feedback in a very like short amount of time. Oh, it's, this is so it's, yeah, it's this design thinking is very very helpful for entrepreneurs also the existing uh, business for uh, who are uh, who are from uh, profit making business yeah. so it's yeah i think this design thinking is also uh hey, it works in both ways right for uh, businesses uh, who are trying to make profit or social business I lost I I have lost you for a moment. You frozen.
Hello. Yeah, sorry, sorry for the technical. That's okay. Issue. Yeah. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the thing, you know, like the design thinking. Uh, I think our audience, uh, this is a very important tool. This will be uh, important tool for you. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's great. So uh, going forward, uh, can you could you tell us about uh, the thing that you're doing right now, mm -hmm. your work, and the impact of your work in the community? Okay. So right now I. It's difficult for me to say, but I guess yeah. what I'm doing is an, like an artist. Um, so I try to live from my creativity, basically. And it was recently, um, like two years ago in, in Brazil, where I discovered that I was very creative. Um, and, and so suddenly I started realizing, you know, my place in the world. I was not fitting in these, in these big companies, for example. So my place was more creative. And, um, and so I started painting in Brazil already. And so now in my, in my time, I love painting and experimenting with colors. I do abstract painting and and also now I'm doing workshops to uh, teach how how I see painting and how I see the importance of uh, finding your expression so for me it's very important to express yourself in a creative way um, so basically, um, for me, everyone is an artist. We all have a creative uh, person inside of ourselves. Yes. And, and then I combine that with psychology and uh, therapy and how art can be a way to transform emotions into paintings but also not looking for a result just the transformation you know it can be painting it can be dancing it can be singing but using other ways of expressing ourselves not only working you know I think that yeah. we need to have fun also in life you know fun? like to hmm. strengthen the mental ability yes for me, um, developing this creative side and having fun will help you, will support you in your professional life. I understand. So, yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm working with different projects um, with women. I'm working with young people um, and with each one of them, I adapt the content, the information um, for their well-being. Wonderful. It's mm -hmm. really wonderful. Uh, you have been to different countries, you know, like Africa, Brazil, Belgium, and Australia. Um, a very critical uh, part is that how do you see uh, to have a global mindset? Like I, young people, they should have a, uh, what do you think about that? They should have a, a global mindset, you know, like uh, they should, you know, explore beyond their boundary. They should, you know, like communicate with uh, people, like-minded people around the world to create, a, you know, international community. Yeah. So uh, tell us a, a bit about uh, this one. And after that, tell us about, uh, you know, like the fourth industrial revolution is coming and what young people could, you know, like develop some skills, what type, types of okay. skill young people should develop for future? Okay, so global mindset for me is, is being curious about other people, about 
sometimes when we see something different, we are afraid and we have fear because it's something new. But for me, global mindset is to be open, open to this difference. It doesn't have to be bad. You can actually learn so many things from these differences. So, you know, when I went to Bangladesh, it's very different. For example, the way I dress and the way they dress and how can I learn and how can I, in, at, at the end, it's like, adapt. Enjoy, yeah, how can you adapt? You know, how to enjoy these differences. And when you, and when you are open, you realize that we are actually very similar. Exactly. So for me, global mindset is opening. We have so many beliefs, you know, that different is bad, that different is not good, you know. Yeah. And when you start... Because, open, yeah, some people, uh, uh, they don't like changes. Yeah. But, you know, in my experience, it's so enriching, the different. I love the different, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, it's boring. Boring, yeah, that's true. Doing the different kinds of works, doing some crazy works, you know, like do some, uh, you know, like unimaginable things. Yeah. Being curious is very important, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, yes, uh, tell us uh, some of you know, your suggestions or advice, I would say, rather, for young people, what skills they should develop, you know, like very specifically, like few skills, which is uh, very critical for okay. for the industry. Well, for, you know, for me, it's very simple. It's very simple. And I'm, I'm going to say, um, that the skill for me is, is to love yourself, you know, as simple as that. And of course, technology and entrepreneurship and so on. But if you don't love yourself, everything is going to be more difficult. So for me, one of the key skills have been my self-esteem, you know, to first... Exactly you know, start seeing myself with good eyes because what I've been taught in school, you know, in society is that I'm not good enough. And I don't buy that anymore. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's my piece of advice. No. For my that is true because in that sense, uh, and if you love yourself, you know everybody want to, uh, everyone wants to feel about, you know, good, that uh, about themselves they are good people, something like that, and that will transform their out uh, inner side into outer side that they will see other people as a good person, you know, and because yeah, they they will be self content people. This is a very powerful advice I would suggest. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's 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 great and uh, perfect. So, and uh, do you have any suggestion for uh, the last question? I would say uh, about uh, how do you see about the volunteer experience for students, young people? You know, it can be a local or international. Mm -hmm. For me, I would say that if you have the opportunity to volunteer, just do it. Because you think that you are helping someone, but actually the reality is that you receive so much from helping others. So for me, it's very enriching and just an opportunity for experience, you know, that's you know, that's how you get to know you. That's how you get to know so many things about the world, ex experiences, and volunteer is one of them. Wonderful. Thank you so much, <laughs> Amalia. That has been an amazing and very insightful session. And I will share a few uh, takeouts from our session. Like, yeah, yeah first of all, Dear audience, you, we all should you know, love ourselves. That's why we need to explore more about our inner self. 
we need to find our you know like passion we to uh, educate uh, we need to you know study more about ourselves do mm-hmm. s- some meditation and then you know like uh, if you if you love yourself then you find your passion and you keep working for you know like the thing you love and yeah and whenever you get some you know like yeah that opportunities go grab that opportunity and especially for people who are in uh, you know like inter- uh, who are in startup or who are doing business or who are uh, thinking about doing business uh, you know like design thinking is a very important tool for them you know uh, and try to uh, the farms they are available locally and internationally so you guys should you know like look for that that's very nice take out so we be very privileged to have you with us earlier and we wish you a very best of luck for your future endeavors and we'll keep in touch and in future if there is any opportunity we'll collaborate uh, in many other ways i i hope i can go to bangladesh again <laughs> oh you're that, welcome that would be amazing and thank you so much for doing this recap with all the things that we have uh, said and i also hope that everything goes well with the school of entrepreneurship development and i hear from you you know in the years ahead that you're doing a wonderful job thank you so much thank you so much it's an honor thank you and have a good day and dear audience uh, uh, i believe you have enjoyed our session and you have learned something uh, a bit from our guest amalia and good night and stay well